to our speakers, Ms. Rinda Bajaj, our program coordinator, Mr. Asham Berry, program manager at Switcher. So everyone, before starting with this, I would like to tell you about Swecha. It is an organization dedicated to enabling ourselves and others around us to be the change in making a visible difference to the environment. So here, as you all know that these butterflies play a very vital role in our ecosystem so here, I would like to introduce Mr. Asham Berry, who has been working extensively past six years with young students, as well as leading as a program manager at Swecha. Before that, it's a request to each and everyone. If uh, like Mam is going to start with the presentation, it's a request you all to keep your videos off. Thank you. Now I would like to honor Mr. Asham Berry to introduce with the topic. Pass on to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Um, yes. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful introduction. We are very, very excited, both Rinda and I are extremely, extremely excited to, to be on board and work with you all today through this webinar. As you all know, it's, it's a very interesting topic. It's around uh, the importance of, of butterflies um, in our ecosystem, in our environment, in our city, in particular in Delhi, where we all live. So we're going to have a lot of interesting discussion around butterflies, around their importance, around uh, what can we as citizens do to actually bring these butterflies back into our ecosystem and see them not just uh, in parks and in forests, but also in our in our own backyard as well. So we're going to have some interesting conversation. It's going to be very interactive. Uh, just one quick, as Ma'am already pointed out, because of internet issues and internet bandwidth issues, we'd request you all to uh, keep yourselves, of course, on mute. But at the same time, also, if you can keep your videos off for the time being, we'll get some time towards the end of the session to to see each other as well. So for now, if you could all turn your videos off, that would be great. I'm going to also invite uh, Brinda if you could share your screen so that we could all yep. see the presentation as well. Yep. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, thank you, ma'am, for that wonderful introduction also about Swecha. I'd also like to tell all of you students that uh, we as an organization have been working for almost uh, 15, 20 years now in the environmental space, in environment and education. And we work with a lot of young students every year like you all. In fact, last year we worked with students from your school and we organized uh, an interesting urban gardening workshop with some of you and we also did a workshop on water with you all. So today, in continuation to continue that engagement, we're going to be doing a separate discussion. This is going to be around the importance of butterflies, the importance of butterflies in our ecosystem, in our habitat, in our in our city, as well as uh, in our entire country and in, in, the, in the entire world as well. So we're going to have a larger discussion. Uh, once again, Request you all to keep your videos off and all of you on mute. There's a chat box that is there, which you all know about, which we can uh, continue to keep having our conversation in. There are going to be some interesting quizzes that we'll be playing. So whenever you have to answer a question, you can answer that in the chat box. So if you have any questions that you'd like to address, feel free to also bring them into the chat box. Uh, Brinda, I'm still waiting yeah. for your screen to be shared. Uh, can you see my screen, uh, screen right now? Not yet. I think the host will have to give me an access to it. Ma'am, could someone from the school uh, give Brinda access yeah, sure, to sure, you? Sure, sure. Definitely. Thank you. All right, so I have a question for all of you in the meantime, till we get set up and till we begin the, the presentation. I have a question for all of you, which you can actually uh, address, which you can bring up in the chat box. So my question to you is very simple. As you all know, for the last couple of months, almost it's almost four months now. We started in March, so March, April, May, June. We're entering into July, so it's 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 closing in on three and a half, four months, and we've all been forced to stay indoors and live uh, confined to to our rooms or to our homes. So my question to all of you is something that we've been asking all the students that we've been engaging with. 
over the last couple of months through zoom calls and through webinars is that uh, and you can feel free to 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 uh, message us in the chat box so that we can hear your responses uh, the question is very simple what have you been doing in the last 3 months to keep yourselves reconnect yourselves with nature or to connect yourselves with nature it could be anything so any example that you want to share any story that you want to share uh, you can mention that in the chat box as to how you actually been spending your time during this lockdown i'm going to now uh, also leave it over to my colleague brinda who is going to begin with this presentation yeah so hi everyone uh, i think you cannot see me uh, you will have to give me an access yeah yeah so hi everyone good evening i'm really happy to see all of you today here for this wonderful like beautiful session that we'll be taking so today like all of you know we'll be talking about butterflies right so before we start with the session like importance of butterfly in our ecosystem what is written out here i would want to introduce you to the word pollinator so this is like right now from 22nd till 28th of june there is this pollinator you know week going on that people are celebrating right so what do we actually mean by pollinators right so you must have read about it you must have your uh, you must have got discussions in your class or you must have you know discussed it with your parents that how do this word pollination or like what do pollinators do so when we talk about uh, our jungles our forests do you think that uh, we are the ones who planted those trees or those plants and those huge forests they've come up uh, no right and then if we see the flowers like the beautiful colorful flowers that are there or the food that we are eating it is because of whom it is actually because of the pollinators so there are different kind of pollinators in our ecosystem uh, if i say there are birds and there are bats there are you know uh, these butterflies so today we'll be talking about this one of the pollinators so what is the importance of butterflies in our ecosystem so before we go on to that i would just want to you know know that how much do you know about these beautiful insects in our environment so we'll go on to a quiz a very short quiz and i would want all of you to write your answers in the chat box so here we will start with the small quiz brinda yeah. sorry sorry to uh, cut you in the middle i think uh, the chat box option has been disabled on this particular video by the school so what we can do is maybe the students can write their responses down and uh, we can take that right at the end as in we can have some of them unmute and then do that because i don't see a chat box in the in the uh, uh, yeah okay. okay so if if that works we could we could probably do that right at the end so i think we can probably start with the presentation for now and then move forward yeah okay so there are certain questions that i will be asking you all of you uh can i request uh, the coordinator or the person who's uh, handling it if they can uh, disable enable the chat box for a moment till we are doing the quiz if that is possible i think it you probably have to start another call so i don't know if it's possible right now with the copy get back to it yeah take it so the question goes like what do butterflies eat so start writing your answers with yourself so that we can discuss it later the first question goes like what do butterflies eat so you can just put roman numeral 1 as in the first question and your answer to the first. so how when we write question answers in our notebook similarly question 1 answer what do butterflies eat it could be anything that you think and at the end we'll turn all your videos on and we'll try and see uh some of your responses and we'll see how many of you are actually able to get so question 1 what do butterflies eat okay yeah now what about question number 2 so the question number 2 goes like when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly the process is called what i am repeating my question when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly what is the process called you can just participate it doesn't matter if you're answering it right or wrong whatever you know about it you can just tell third question yeah a butterfly's long tongue or hollow feeding tube is called a 
These are certain very basic and very interesting things to know about a butterfly. And then fourth question goes like, how many wings do butterflies have? If you imagine a butterfly in your head and start thinking, uh, whenever you must have noticed a butterfly flying, fluttering, or like doing whatever, how, how many wings have you noticed in a butterfly? And then the other question goes like, which part of the body do they use for tasting their food? Which part of the body do they use for tasting their food? And then the last question goes like, how many legs do butterflies have? And let me tell you, their feet plays a very important role that we'll discuss later. But just write that how many legs do butterflies have? Yeah. So we'll take the answers at the end and I'm very sure till the end you will know a lot of answers because we'll be discussing a lot of things in the presentation. So I'll go uh, back to the thing, importance of butterflies in our ecosystem. So like I was talking about the pollination process. The first thing is they are, they play a very big role in pollination. Like you have seen butterflies, you know, going from one flower to another and then to the other. And it creates a very beautiful scene in front of you. So I would just want to ask you, or you just think in your mind, are they just beautiful or they just please us when they're there in the environment? Or are they actually doing some sort of work? One thing, they're having their food, right? The other thing is they're doing a very big thing, which is pollination. So when they go on one flower and then go to the other, so what actually do they carry with themselves on their wings? I'll show you a picture. Like you can see this butterfly and you can see these yellow particles uh, over the wings. These are pollens. Like you must have noticed pol uh, pollen grains on a flower. That is what they do. They carry one, uh, you know, they carry pollen from one flower to the other, where that process comes. So the pollination, the, the process of pollination comes, right? This is what they do when they go from one flower to the other. And the other thing is that they play a very important role in the food chain. Okay. So what they're doing, they are giving us flowers or they are going from one flower to other, you know, providing us vegetables or fruits. Uh, one thing that I want to add is like butterflies, we have other pollinators like honeybees. So these, uh, if we don't have these pollinators in our ecosystem, we might just not survive because every third bite of food that we are eating is because of the pollinators, right? So they play a very important and a very big role in our environment. So when I talk about the food chain, like you can see here, uh, a bird or a lizard, a garden lizard, you know, what is their food? They eat insects. There are a lot of insectivorous birds. And then you have lizards, they feed on insects or they feed on butterflies like you can see one here there's a lizard feeding on a butterfly right and then we have a bird feeding on the caterpillar of a butterfly right so this is a food chain you don't have to feel bad about it or you don't have to feel you know sad about it oh the butterfly is gone this is how the food chain this is how nature works you know so they play a very important role in our ecosystem so before we you know discuss anything about the butterflies let's just go that how how does a butterfly you know, emerge into such a beautiful insect that we see and which makes us so happy. So we'll talk about the life cycle of a butterfly. So I'll show you a video here. It's, uh, it's a very interesting video. Yeah. I hope all of you can see the video.
So yeah. How do you make a butterfly? Sorry. First, a butterfly lays an egg. Yeah. So like you saw a beautiful life cycle of a butterfly, right? So the first stage or the first thing that a butterfly does, it actually goes and lays its egg. egg. A lot of butterflies, what they do is they lay their eggs under a leaf so that it's protective, protected from the predators or from, from bad weather. So one very interesting thing that you saw was that the butterfly was the caterpillar, the first stage where, you know, after the egg, the caterpillar was feeding on its own egg. Why was it doing that, you know? So it's very interesting. The first thing that they feed on, a lot of caterpillars, not all, so they feed on their own egg because it is full of nutrients. So the first thing that they feed on is their egg. And then it goes to another stage, which we call as larva stage, where the caterpillar is growing and is eating the leaf. So I want to tell you one thing that a butterfly will only lay its egg on a particular plant, which the caterpillar feeds on, which is called the host plant. Okay. So it will not lay its egg any, on any random plant. So they test the chemical of uh, that leaf, particular leaf, and they know that uh, the caterpillar will, will feed on that particular leaf, right? And then uh, comes the stage of pupation, where the larva, as in the caterpillar, sticks itself to a stem of the same plant or to a nearby plant, and then covers it in, uh, it's covered, covers itself into a pupa. And then after some days, you know, the whole process of, you know, creating the wings inside that pupa, like you can see a pupa out here. And then the adult butterfly comes. I'll show you a picture later where I also saw this uh, butterfly coming out of the pupa. Okay, so we'll move on to the next topic, which is idle place for butterflies. Uh, over to you, Ashim. Ashim, sir, will take this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brinda. So we just got a glimpse and we saw a... Uh, a very short film, but a beautiful uh, representation of how this entire life cycle of a butterfly works. And we saw the entire process in just a couple of minutes, but it actually isn't, of course, a process that's happened so quickly. It takes some time. But at the same time, we got a glimpse of how this entire process works. Where do these butterflies actually come from? What is the role of a caterpillar? What is the role of uh, a small leaf or a host plant? Or what is the role of insects? So we got a we got an introduction into a little bit of, a little bit. Uh, content, a little bit of information about what exactly uh, these butterflies are all about. Now we're going to specifically focus on uh, another very interesting aspect of this webinar, which looks into how we can actually attract these butterflies. We can actually in increase their population, make sure that there are more butterflies around us. Because when we look all around us before the lockdown, if you look at times before uh, COVID-19, or if you look at times any time before, before the lockdown was imposed. What did we see in our city? When somebody used to ask us about Delhi, uh, did we speak about the birds and butterflies and the forests? No, we used to talk mostly about how polluted our air is or how polluted our river Yamuna is or how polluted or how many uh, landfills Delhi has or how much waste Delhi generates. So we associated Delhi with a lot of negative things with regard to our environment. But then something very interesting happened in the last three months, which we all were able to witness from our homes. We saw that while we were all, while humans uh, were all at home and while our industries and our factories were shut down, we saw that a river started reviving itself. We saw a river which had cleaner water. We saw our air automatically uh, revive itself. The pollution became less. We could see clear blue skies. And at the same time, very interestingly, we could all spot a lot of more birds in and around our colonies, on our terraces, in our balconies, and also around the entire city. So the one thing that we could hear, which we normally hear on any given day, is the sound of traffic. But during three months of lockdown, all we could hear was the chirping of birds. Similarly, we could see a lot of different butterflies. In fact, towards the end of this session, we're going to show you a very interesting video that talks and shows you a little bit about different kinds of butterflies that exist in Delhi that we actually captured videos of during the last three months. So now coming to a very interesting part of this webinar, which talks about if we want to bring butterflies to our garden or if we want to attract butterflies, what do we have to do? What sort of an environment do we have to create for butterflies? We have to keep in mind different kinds of things. As you can see on the screen right now, the first and most essential component of building a garden and creating a butterfly garden to attract butterflies is that any butterfly in order to get attracted needs a lot of sunlight, a good amount, a decent amount of sunlight. So we need about at least six to seven hours of that sunlight that is required on a terrace or in a balcony or even in a park 
to attract these butterflies. And when we are talking about the types of species of plants, we are going to get into a discussion about three different species that are required that you need to plant, which we'll speak about in the next slide. And then we also have to keep in mind the kind of practices we're using with regards to gardening. Uh, what kind of pesticides are we using? Uh, what kind of uh, insecticides or pesticides are we trying to use? We're not going to be using any form of chemical or fertilizer. It's all natural and organic. So when we're talking about mulching or we're talking about composting, we'll have a discussion about this a little later. But Brinda, if we move to the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're designing this garden, we have to keep in mind three different kinds of species. So along with food, water and shelter, which are very, very essential to us as living beings, at the same time also to birds and butterflies, we have to keep in mind there are three different types of plants that are actually attracting these butterflies. And as you can see on your screen, the first one that we're going to talk about is what we call a host plant. A host ka matlab sab jante, host ka matlab, as in somebody who's welcoming a guest to the, as in for example, right now when we are hosting this webinar, then we are your host. We are conducting this webinar for you, right? And you are all our guests. So similarly, when you invite your friends over for a, for a lunch or for a dinner or for a birthday party, you become the host and you are actually inviting your friends as guests and you are actually making sure that they are entertained, making sure that they have a good time, making sure that they are relaxed and everybody is enjoying themselves so that they feel comfortable. Maybe. Similarly, what a host plant does as the job of being a host, it is responsible for making caterpillars feel very comfortable in a natural environment, in a setting where these caterpillars can actually, uh, can actually, grow, eventually grow into, into the butterflies that we're talking about. And how does that process happen, which we saw during the life cycle, but as well, if you look at this photo here, this picture that you see on the screen right now is of a leaf, uh, which seems to have been eaten up. And we also get a lot of questions because we work on the ground and we work with a lot of trees and we work with a lot of people who work with trees or plant trees or create forests. We get a lot of questions from people in the city who ask us, that, you know, in our terrace, we see a lot of these different leaves that have been eaten up. Or we see a lot of leaves of taller plants, smaller plants or shrubs of different flowers that have leaves which have been completely eaten. So is that a bad sign? Does that mean that my plant is dying? Absolutely not. It's actually a very, very good sign for your plant. It's actually a very good sign uh, for your garden. So whenever you go and inspect, in fact, this can be homework for all of you to note down that after this session, once this webinar gets over, you can maybe go, not today in the evening, but maybe tomorrow. You could spend your entire Sunday in your garden or in your terrace, uh, on your balconies, and you can actually examine different plants and see, do the leaves, are the leaves eaten? Do they have holes in them? And if you see these, these leaves that have been eaten up, you know that it's a very, very good sign for your garden, that you're going to get butterflies very, very soon at this space. It's going to be attracting a lot of butterflies. So the host plant serves mainly as food for the plant. And there are many different examples that Brinda will be talking to you all about, telling you about very, very common examples of plants that are host plants. The second plant that we want to talk about, which is the second most important component of the butterfly garden, is the nectar plant. Now, we were talking about the process of pollination earlier. We are coming to a very important part of this garden. If you look at a bagicha or if you see that where a a lot of these butterflies are actually spending a lot of time on flowering species. Flowering species that are red in color, have flowers that are pink in color or yellow or, or uh, any color really. So any flower that you see, this one that you see here is an image of, of a bougainvillea tree, right? And you can see a butterfly that's actually uh, sipping nectar off the tree itself. So these nectar plants provide the nectar, provide that source of nectar for these butterflies. And when we are planting these nectar plants, when we are planting these beautiful, colorful flowering species that we're talking about that provide the nectar, we have to keep in mind that they are actually planted in clusters. So if you have yellow flowers of a particular species, you actually plant all those yellow flowers in a cluster, in a bundle together. If you have pink flowers, you'll plant those pink flowers of that species together. So you're creating small, small clusters within your garden of different species that are nectar species. So if you see, uh, Vrinda, if you could go to the next slide. Next one. Yeah, so if you come to this slide here, this is the clusters that I was talking about. If you just go back to the previous slide once, please. Yeah. So on this slide, you can see here, you can see images. These are representative images of 
different types of gardens again so this one on on the top left that you see you can again see clusters of different species of plants that have been planted very very close together and the idea is that when a butterfly from a height is traveling and sees these it is easily able to go and sit on one of them from a distance it's able to get attracted to these clusters a lot easier so you have your host species which we just spoke about then you have your nectar species and the third species that we're going to talk about which is another very interesting component which is called the bush or shelter species ab jaise delhi mein aajkal for the last couple of days and even now from next month onwards in fact the monsoons are set to arrive in delhi and when the monsoons arrive what's going to happen to the city we're going to see a lot of strong winds that are blowing we're going to see a lot of rainfall for a couple of months so during these months when we see turbulent weather conditions jab aandhi toofan ka mausam hota hai jab bahut sara barish hota hai to us samay kya hota hai what we try to do what these butterflies try to do actually is take shelter take refuge so like we have a home we have a roof on our heads where we can take shelter whenever it rains or whenever there are strong winds these butterfly species actually take shelter in what we call shelter species so like you can see in this photo here this is a native grass uh and you can actually see butterflies that uh, this butterfly species that's actually trying to seek shelter within the grass itself trying to build a small little space of refuge trying to hide in the grass till the weather situation improves so we have these three very very important components that take care of food that provide the nectar and that also provide shelter for the plant three very very key components that any butterfly garden always requires when you're making this garden so when you're doing your homework tomorrow and when you're seeing your garden uh, or your terrace uh, your terrace garden or your park or your uh, your balcony garden you can actually go and examine the different kinds of plants you have and what purpose they serve are they nectar species are they flowering species are they host species or are they something like a bush do you have a bush species in your in your garden so these are things that you can note down and you can see in your garden itself a lot of the work that you will be doing on the ground with regard to environment with regards to finding out about birds or butterflies is always done through learning on the ground remember when we are studying about these different things it's very important that we live with them that we connect directly with them because learning about it on a webinar or learning about it uh, in the classroom is one thing we can learn about it of course in a classroom and and through a webinar discussion but it's equally important if not even more important for us to actually go out into the ground and actually see these different things in parks in forests even in our terrace and balcony because of course right now given the situation all of us cannot go out to public spaces and we have to stay home and stay safe uh, we can still do these activities from home so we'll speak a little bit more about that i just want to take you back to one photo that we crossed uh, of this beautiful garden that we had created uh, a couple of months back so if you can just yeah so this is actually when we are designing this garden and i spoke about cluster of plants right i spoke so if you can see in these images here again um, there are there are a couple of unique things about this particular garden so of course the first thing is which is very centric to what we were saying that all these plants that you see are either nectar species or host species or they are bush species so agar aap sabse piche layer ke plants ko dekhenge at the back the one with the silver tire and the uh, slightly dark greenish tires those they have tall grasses growing there which is actually lemon grass and citronella and different bushes which form your bush species uske aage aap jayenge to aapko ek nimbu ka ped dikhega right to nimbu ka ped aapka host species ban jata hai that's a species that's actually playing host to caterpillars and then right in the front you can see and even a close up image of it you can see you can see these different flowers whether it's sada bahar or it's ixora or it's uh, many different kinds of cluster of flowers that we are talking about which are often compact together and like i said the earlier thing that i had mentioned about these cluster of flowers planted together within the garden to make sure that these butterflies actually get to enjoy the nectar from these plants so you have your nectar and flowering species and your bush species and your host species all within a very very small space ye actually ek chhat hai jo ki gaziabad mein ek learning center hai so like your school there are many of these different learning centers where students go to study and uh, work on different projects together work on different activities so like we worked with your school last year we also worked with this other center in gaziabad and a bunch of students there were 40 students that came together to set up this uh, this small little garden which has another unique thing of course which one was the nectar host and uh, bush species of the butterfly garden that we spoke about the second most interesting thing is if you look at this garden very carefully we have not used what we call a normal gamla jo hame dekhne ko milta hai which we see 
uh, in our different backyards. These are unique gamlas. These are what we call upcycled gamlas. So what we've done, humne kabar se jugaad kiya. We have actually upcycled some of the waste, right? So we've actually made you made the most out of old waste material. And in this, you can see there are paint cans and there are old tires which we've collected from different uh, spaces in Delhi. Different people who don't use these tires anymore. In tires, ko humne dubara paint karke. Usme humne three tarike ke soil mixture ko humne mila ke humne एक टायर बेस्ड गार्डन बनाया जो कि एक वेस्ट गार्डन जिसे भी हम कह सकते हैं। कैन कॉल इट एन अपसाइकल गार्डन बिल्ड कंप्लीटली फ्रॉम वेस्ट मटेरियल एंड इट हैज ऑल द कंपोनेंट्स दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड टू अट्रैक्ट द बटरफ्लाई टू इट सो इमेजिन इफ यू लुक एट दिस फोटो ऑल अराउंड यू यू कैन सी बिहाइंड दिस गार्डन देर आर ओनली बिल्डिंग्स देर आर यू डोंट सी मेनी ट्रीज यू डोंट सी मेनी ग्रीन कवर यू डोंट सी मच ग्रीन कवर एंड दैट इज द केस इन मोस्ट ऑफ आर सिटी ऑल अराउंड होम्स टूडे ऑल्सो we don't see as much greenery as we should around us but does that is that something that should stop us from actually starting from our homes itself starting from our terrace starting from our balconies and actually creating a garden like this to attract butterflies because imagine this is a space in ghaziabad which is surrounded by factories which is surrounded by buildings and houses does not have much green cover doesn't have a forest next to it but tab bhi this is a space that attracts many many different kinds of butterflies that you'll see a little later on Uh, within this space, so imagine dust or concrete के बीच में आप बहुत सारे तितियों को attract कर रहे हैं. So it is possible to do it anywhere. It is possible to do it in your school. It's possible to do it in a terrace. It's possible to do it in your backyard. It's possible to, of course, do it in a forest or different green spaces or even parks. So creating a butterfly garden is, is very very easy to do. And all we have to do is pay attention and connect directly with these plants and see कौन से पौधे पे कौन सा species बैठता है. so we have to examine we have to spend a lot of time which is something we'll talk about little later when we speak about the homework that we all have for you we want to the next slide <coughs> yeah so now this is just a representative example a uh, image again if you just go back of of a of a particular type of design of butterfly garden that you can create jahan pe of course wo teen species ki ke bare mein hame dhyan rakhna padega उसके अलावा आई टू लीव इट टू वृंदा नाउ हु एक्चुअली गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट सम अदर कंपोनेंट्स सम एडिशनल कंपोनेंट्स दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द गार्डन सो ऑफ कोर्स वी स्पोक अबाउट फूड एंड शेल्टर बट वी फॉरगॉट अबाउट अ थर्ड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिसोर्स व्हिच यू कैन सी इन दिस की एज़ वेल व्हिच इज अ वाटर रिसोर्स सो वी आल्सो नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट देयर इज वाटर सो आई एम गोइंग टू गो बैक टू वृंदा नाउ एंड शी इज गोइंग टू स्पीक टू यू अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट सम एडिशनल एलिमेंट्स दैट यू नीड इन ऑर्डर टू मेक श्योर दैट योर गार्डन हैज प्लेंटी ऑफ बटरफ्लाईज प्लेंटी ऑफ कैटरपिलर्स प्लेंटी ऑफ बर्ड्स दैट आर एक्चुअली uh living in that card so back to you in that yeah thank you ashim so now we'll be talking about additional elements like some very uh, weirdly important characteristics of butterfly which we generally generally don't tend to notice and which is very important for their own survival so the first one goes like mud puddling so when you think about mud puddling what comes to your mind just think about it you know mud puddling so it's it's uh, seems like a sort of a fun activity right so uh basically what do bird, uh, butterflies do how do they mud puddle so while they do the mud puddle what do they get out of it so they are drinking water out here you can see a very a natural habitat here where you can see a lot of butterflies drinking water how are they drinking water first of all they use their feet to drink or to taste okay and they are getting salt and minerals through nectar they get nutrients and then they require minerals and salt so how do they get that salt this is how they get their salt and mineral from and here we generally see a lot of male butterflies taking that mineral or uh, the salt through water or through sand so how can you create that space in your own house you can see a vessel here it's a bird watering vessel that you can see what you can do is put some pebbles inside it and put sand and then don't fill the water till the brim you have to keep it to a little a little bit low like you can see it here so that a butterfly comes and not you know uh, get inside it and it actually it, it is able to take that uh, mineral from it so what uh, do uh, male butterflies do they actually take minerals from the water and then they pass it on to the female butterfly right and the second thing that comes in is basking so when we talk about ourselves you know when we say sun bathing right what are we getting we are getting vitamin d from it which is important for human health right through basking so if i talk about butterflies butterflies are cold blooded insects right 
and being cold blooded they need to warm up their body to get that energy to go from one flower to another so how do they get that en energy from you know so they get that energy from sunlight which, which is very important for them so you must have noticed uh, whenever you see a butterfly they actually you know flutter uh, where the area is open where there is proper sunlight so when we create that butterfly garden also one thing that we have to keep in mind is the sunlight okay so how do they bask to get that energy like you can see it here in this picture there are some rocks okay and uh, they 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 have actually opened their wings and they're sitting getting that energy to fly from one place to another to warm their body up right so third thing comes as roosting what does roosting means so roosting can be connected to resting to learn that word so in the butterfly's world roosting means resting so uh, just just think about it you have seen butterflies during the daytime where do they go you know at night where do they go and rest we have never seen them resting like until and unless we go and observe which i did uh, you know few days back and i actually saw a butterfly resting so how did i get to know about that that the butterfly is actually resting so you can see a lot of uh, monarch butterflies out here who are resting so what do they do i saw this butterfly the butterfly was there on a leaf you know for more than a minute then i got to know if a butterfly is actually resting on a leaf for more than a minute that butterfly is actually resting so during the night they rest and what they do is they hang themselves upside down from a leaf from a bigger leaf or a stem right so this is how they rest fourth thing is rotten fruit and animal dung what is this like rotten fruit and animal dung so one thing that you know the butterflies eat to they don't actually eat they sip liquid they take the food in the form of liquid it can be anything so one thing is nectar that you must be aware about and we were talking about it and ashim shall told you the second thing that they are very fond of there are different species species of butterflies which will only and only feed on rotten fruit or animal dung so here are some pictures yeah so you can see a half cut orange and this uh, rotten apple uh, there are these butterflies they are feeding on the sugar like the liquid portion of that fruit so what you can do in your garden to attract butterflies or to you know provide food for them you can actually keep a piece or a cut piece of a fruit or a fruit that you're not eating and uh, you must be deciding to throw it or just you know keep it somewhere just go you can keep it uh, keep that fruit for your butterfly and the other thing which is uh, weirdly exciting that they also feed on you know uh, animal dung so few days back i saw some of the butterflies which were not going on the nectar of a flower but they were actually visiting cattle dung okay so there are certain butterflies uh, which will actually go and feed on cattle dung so yeah so now we have discussed about some important characteristics of butterflies which we have to keep in mind uh while we are actually creating a butterfly garden like creating a mud puddling space for them and then creating a basking space for them what we have to do is just keep a rock which is sun facing so these are certain things which we have to keep in mind okay so we'll move on to another thing which is very important when you are designing a butterfly garden now now that you know about the design all the patterns that you have to follow the very important thing that you have to follow is a uh, native host species what is what do you mean by native host species where a butterfly comes and lays its egg right uh, where the caterpillar will feed on the leaves of that particular plant so a very common and a very interesting plant is curry patta you can ask your mom or your parents about it you know, that we put this patta in you know in our food while we cook our food and it is also food for caterpillar of a lime uh, of a lime butterfly and of a common mormon as it so it's a host plant of common mormon you can see this egg out here a yellow color egg and then you can see the whole process of the caterpillar you know it's very interesting like you go and observe if you have a curry patta leaf and if you see some leaves eaten then that's a really good news for you because you are going to watch a butterfly emerge out of a pupa in few days right something that you can observe uh you can see this beautiful butterfly uh i just saw it was like i was really lucky to actually you know see this uh, this butterfly came out of the pupa and it took its first flight in front of me so it's a very beautiful feeling if you get to see something like this in nature something which you can also observe from today if not done before 
So the second plant is porcupine flower. It is the host plant of lemon pansy. If you want to see this butterfly, you can plant a porcupine flower. We also call it pilo vajradanti. Pila vajradanti is what we call. It is a medicinal plant. Uh, you know, helping uh, helps uh, to helps to make our teeth strong. And then we have common silver line. You must have seen an army hedge. You must have seen any sort of hedge. So this is a particular hedge called an army hedge. You must have seen it in your home garden or in a public park. We keep these hedges to sort of decorate our parks, right, or or our uh, lawns. So this is the leaf. Or uh, this plant is the host plant of common silver line of this beautiful butterfly. Then we have a very interesting butterfly, and one of my favorites from the common butterflies that we see in our house is common lime. So a lot of you must have, uh, you know, you must be having a plant called lemon tree. It's a very common tree to have in our houses or nearby. So this is the host plant of common lime. So if you want to see this butterfly, and if you see a caterpillar on a lemon tree, that is for sure a caterpillar of a common lime. Then we have tawny coaster. The Host plant of tawny coaster is passion flower. So the plants that I'm talking, I'll be talking about. You can actually go with your parents to, uh, you know, to a nearby nursery and ask for these uh, particular plant species. Uh, we'll be sharing a list with your teacher that they'll share with all of you later. So here is the process of tawny coaster, a tawny looking caterpillar, and this is the process: the uh, pupa and then uh, butterfly emerging out of it. And then we have a very common tree for a butterfly called common jay, Ashoka tree. I'm sure 99% of you must be aware about this tree because it's very common in our cities, you know, in our urban areas, in our houses, or in public parks. This is the common. This is the host plant of common jay. And then we have zebra blue. The host plant is chitrak, a white leadwort is what we called it. And yeah, it, there we have a very interesting butterfly, beautiful one. Red furet is the name. And it's a small size butterfly, and the host plant is Bryophyllum pinnatum. Patthar chatta is what we call. So, if even if you're not aware about the scientific name, I'm sure you or your parents are very much aware about the plant called Patthar chatta because it's a medicinal plant also, and it plays as a host plant for red furet. And then we have plain tiger. Why plain tiger? You can see the color of the butterfly. It resembles the color of a tiger. That is how it actually got its name. And the host plant of plain tiger is milkweed. And uh, one thing that I want to tell you is uh, that butterflies, the caterpillar of butterflies, actually feed on poisonous plants. You know, a lot of poisonous plants, which are poisonous for human beings, not for them. This is also how they help us, you know, by removing those uh, poisonous plants. And this is one of those. And then we have Indian palm bob. The uh, you know host plant is cone palm. Now we'll come to nectar species where now our butterfly is coming, it has come out of the pupa. Now it needs food or now it needs the nectar to feed on. So we have this flower called coat button and this flower is very rich in nectar and it attracts a lot of butterflies. Like you can see one out here. We have Tony Costa and yeah. which is a very common plant and uh, you know you must have it must be there in your house or you must have seen it somewhere or the other and it attracts a lot of butterflies and one example is here in front of you which is red fear root yeah and then we have marigold you know gendega fool is what we call it in hindi it also attracts a lot of butterflies so if you want to have butterflies attract butterflies then you can have a mix of host plants and nectar plants then we have Vidalia. It's a very beautiful yellow color flower. Uh, it is a ground cover flower. So it will not grow vertically. It will go, grow horizontally. So this also acts as a shelter for uh, the butterflies when it is not flowering, for the smaller butterflies. Then we have rattleweed, one of uh, like other flower which attracts butterflies. And then verbena. These are few flowers, nectar uh, species that we have mentioned out here. So that uh, you can actually go and buy it from your nurseries and you know start planting them in the way we have told you. So these were some host and nectar species which are very important to keep in mind before you design a butterfly garden. Uh, yeah. So we are coming on to a very interesting thing, which is a homework for you. 
nothing to be scared of but a very interesting part which ashram sir will explain you yeah ashram okay all right thank you so much brinda yeah. so coming back to just to recap on what uh, brinda was talking about all these different kinds of uh, species that we just saw we, we saw almost i think 20 or 25 different kinds of plants which are either nectar species or a host species or even some bush species that we saw earlier and all of these are very very important but something that we also don't realize is that and part of this is when you do your homework tomorrow and you actually go to your lawn or if you go to your terrace garden and you see and you look at these different plants you will actually see that a lot of these plants that you saw in this slide in this webinar right now are already growing in your house but you never noticed a butterfly on them or you may not have noticed uh, birds come near them or you may not have seen uh, it expand and become a butterfly garden so a large part of today's session is to of course on one hand is to give you that knowledge and give you that content as to how we can create a butterfly garden what plants are required what atmosphere do we have to create for butterflies how much sunlight do we need how much water do we need to put all these different things food water shelter very important for these butterflies to come to our terrace to our uh, balconies but more importantly what what is required of you and what is your homework from today is what we want to talk to you all about which is the most important if you look at the picture on your right side this is of a group of students we have taken them we take a lot of students like you all also on these experiential journeys so we take them to see a forest or we take them to see river yamuna and we take them to see where your water lends up or where your trees are actually growing or where where are those forests in delhi so this is actually a photo of one of the students who's actually in the middle of sanjay van in the middle of this dense big urban forest in the heart of delhi and what do you see him do you see him quickly do this to his ears can i see all of you do this to your ears on the screen can i see some of you guys quickly do this those of you who have your videos on can we quickly do this yeah i see most of you have already started doing it perfect so what is he doing when he's actually when he's actually making this gesture like you all see here this is a perfect way of trying to open your senses and most importantly your hearing sense to jaise ki hum bata rahe the ki pichle 3 mahino se hum log jab ghar mein reh rahe hain aur bahar nahi nikle to hum logo ne bahut sare aise janwaro ko suna hai chahe wo hamare pakshiyan ho jinke bare mein humne baat kiya very good i see lot of you guys actually opening up your senses already so you're opening up your hearing sense which is what this what the student is actually doing in the forest right now he's trying to connect more with nature he's trying to open up his senses and not just your hearing but your your sense of touch is also very very important your sense of smell is also very important all these senses that we have how can we actually use them to reconnect with nature we all love nature we all talk about nature we read about nature we study about nature in our classrooms uh, or through webinars like this but how many of us actually are opening up our senses to our trees are opening up our senses to our forests or to our butterflies or to our birds so this is the most important part of the webinar for all of you because this is what we call the homework for all of you and this is not like a normal simple homework that might bore you or that might have a deadline or a timeline this is something that we call lifelong homework ye sirf aaj ka homework hai is webinar ka homework nahi hai ye aapka zindagi bhar ka homework hai you have to follow this practice from this webinar onwards of course some of you already do this but to make sure that you do this more regularly this is some take away from today's session so what do you have to do number one it says open up your senses which we already did on the chat and through seeing each other but what we have to keep in mind is that we have to sustain this we have to keep on opening up our senses whether it's in our homes right now or when we step out into our schools later on the second thing we have to do is from this group of uh, 80 of us that are here right now as participants of this webinar uh, along with the support of your teachers we'll actually divide you into different groups of two so you'll have two of you not groups but essentially you'll have a study buddy or what we call a butterfly buddy so you have to find this butterfly buddy of yours and he will become or she will become your study buddy and together during this lockdown period as well as once your schools reopen you all have to work together in teams of two and you have to research on any butterfly of your choice that you find so it could be any of the butterflies that you saw in the previous slides in the previous photos that you like or any butterfly that you spot in your homes or in your school when your schools reopen so you have to find out about this butterfly you have to follow it you have to study it you have to live with this butterfly 
and in order to do that you have to study about its habitat you have to study about its food and any other special needs that this butterfly has what sort of plants does this butterfly sit on does it feed on nectar uh, does it sit on host plants how often does it take shelter all these different things and you'll compile a small report of that which will be a small research study of yours and of course you can always seek our help you can always seek your teachers help and together we have to create an entire uh, document that has or an entire project that has many different butterflies of delhi that you all have researched on that you all have studied about and that you all have made friends with so you and a study buddy of yours you and a research buddy a butterfly buddy of yours will actually work together and open up your senses uh, move into your balconies and your terraces and look for these butterflies or at a later stage even in parks and in your schools look for these butterflies and then actually uh, research them and come up with these projects and this presentation so that is a very very big part of this session today is this homework for all of us because we have to take this back and continue with something that we've learned for the last few months we've learned about how nature can hit the reset button and how our rivers can get clean again how our air can get clean again uh, how we can bring back our birds and our butterflies to not just our homes but all around us in our community or in our forests or in our schools or in our parks uh, and how has that happened that's happened because we as humans were forced to stay indoors and were not exploiting nature at all we were not exploiting our natural resources we were not destroying our forests we were not destroying our natural habitats that are very very crucial for all these different species butterflies ke bare mein humne aaj focus kiya hai but equally important are birds and we do sessions on on all these species together whether it's butterflies or its birds or many different kinds of insects or even different trees that you see around us because all of these different things are actually speaking to us are actually living with us in this larger ecosystem we as humans are equally part of this ecosystem as all these different species that we are talking about so it's important that we respect them the way they have been for many 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 years and i know all of you are doing that all of you are already as a school practicing a lot of things related to sustainability and environment and uh, not only do you host regular workshops but you all do different activities in the school and we are very very hopeful that when the situation gets better and when we can all meet each other and meet our friends and once uh, covid 19 is no longer a pandemic is no longer a health issue and we are all safe and we can actually go to our schools and resume with our normal lives we can all actually meet each other and actually create a butterfly garden like this and you all will be the main people responsible for making that garden we'll just be there to help you we'll be there to plant with you all but since you all have learned so much through this session it's going to be your responsibility and also through your homework when you research about these butterflies how are you going to bring them to your school you're going to bring them by bringing all these plants together some of these plants may already be in your school whether it's kadi patta or nimbu or the hedges that we spoke about or the ashoka trees very common species in delhi jo ki aapko pure delhi mein dekhne ko milta hai so how do we put them together how do we create a small space like what we saw of those photos uh, whether it's a tire garden or it's a herb uh, based garden or it's a butterfly garden or even a forest how do we create these green spaces in your school is something that we can do in addition to this homework once we actually resume with uh, our normal life in the schools as well right uh, there is a video that we have for all of you that we want to show you also before we get back to of course the most uh, the the what we started with which was the quiz which we want to we'd love to hear from you we are all waiting for those answers that some of you would have written down in your in on your sheet so we'll get to that but before that there is a small video it's about a minute long video which which is actually showing you all these different butterflies so brinda who is currently not in delhi uh, she is back at her home place and she had actually over the last 3 months like your homework what has been given to you to do she actually without a butterfly buddy but on her own she actually has taken videos of different butterflies that are also common to delhi that are also native to delhi so in our city we see these different butterflies she also sees them in her native place and she's taken videos from there and she's compiled this video for all of you to see which is showing you and giving you the names of these different butterflies and what different plants are they feeding on so we're going to see this quick video before we move back to the quiz itself yeah
So a lot of common plants, a lot of common butterflies that you actually saw in this video. And as the title says, butterflies, butterflies, and more butterflies. So it's it's actually very very simple. The entire process. In fact, I'll quickly tell you this story uh, of of mine, a personal story of mine from two, a couple, few years back. I think about three years back now. So when Swetcha first started designing these gardens, almost four years back, I think, uh, when we started designing these gardens and we had to do the research, we didn't spend our time on laptops doing the research. What we did is we went to different nurseries. So I went with a few colleagues of mine to different nurseries in Delhi. I'm sure you all know what nurseries are, right? Where where different plants are sold, where different plants are not only grown but then they are also sold. So many different nurseries that exist in Delhi. We went to one particular area in Delhi, which is Meroli. and there's a chain of nurseries that you see out there where there are different kinds of plants that are being sold so we went there and we not only spoke to the local people and asked them what are the different plants where butterflies are actually sitting on them but we also went and examined each of these but uh, each of these different plants that were there in the nursery whether they were flowering plants or they were plants that had leaves that were that were eaten or they were the tall bush species and together we created a list of say 20 different plants that we saw which were either these flowering plants or the host plants or the bush species and when we collected those plants when we actually started growing those plants we collected not only the seeds of those plants but some of the small saplings and we waited for these plants to grow in a contained space where uh, we actually had lot of sunlight on our terrace so we actually built a space out of waste material out of tires using old fridges using a uh, um paint cans using tires using crates all different kinds of waste that became containers so jaise aapne wo gamla ka udaharan dekha tha pehle slides mein jahan pe tires ke sath humne ek bagicha banaya can you imagine we've actually grown uh, uh, an entire lemon tree inside a fridge an old fridge in our office space is grown is actually now turned into a planter which has a huge lemon tree that's growing out of it as part of our butterfly garden we'll share some of those pictures with you as well So the idea is that anything is possible if we put our mind to it and if we actually do that research on the ground. इसके बारे में मैं बहुत बार आपसे बात कर चुका हूँ कि बहुत जरूरी है कि हम असल में ground पर काम करें. Of course, right now with the situation it's difficult, but when the situation improves, it's important for all of us to study these butterflies, study these elements of nature while connecting directly with nature, while living with these different trees, with these different species all around us. We see them every single day. but we don't pay that much attention so that's what your homework is that's what you have to do open your senses while at the same time also try and mingle with these friends try to get to know more about these different friends and spend more time not just with butterflies because this session is about butterflies we need to do it with birds we need to do it with different insects we need to do it with all kinds of species that exist in our ecosystem and we will be more than happy to actually spend more time with you all maybe do further sessions on different themes uh, and help you understand more about these different species because this is only a starting point after this we are going to take it forward and we are going to do different activities both at your school and through classroom learning or through virtual learning where we get to learn about different elements can we go back to the quiz once and what we are going to do now or oh, we've lost a screen uh just a second yeah thank you uh, yeah brinda if you could just go back yeah, to you can, can you see my screen ashram yes we can see your screen yeah so before we start the quiz what we'll do is all of you uh, you will just raise your hands and uh, your teacher will unmute two of the students right we'll pick any of the students any two of the students and we'll unmute that student and the student will answer the question okay i see a thumbs up yeah okay so again repeating the questions so the first question goes like again i'm repeating it What do butterflies eat? Yes. So, if you have sorry. any hand raised, if yeah, I yeah. Ma'am said, "What do butterflies eat?" Someone had mentioned. The best angle is there. Oh, they drink nectar of from flowers. drink nectar from flowers okay, okay very good so and what else we have discussed a lot of things now so that's not a surprise for you if you want to answer another thing for the same question you are right nectar is the right answer anything else that you want to mention anyone yeah okay. i see 
Shorya wants to say something. Yeah, Shorya. Yeah, yeah, so, Poland. Okay. Poland. Uh, I'm sorry, Poland is not the right answer, but nectar was the right answer. So the second answer is like uh, we discussed rotten fruits, right? And cattle dung or animal dung. Second question is, when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly, the process is called... Okay, Asmi, you're not on... Yeah, you can unmute yourself, I think. Yeah, yeah Asmi, we can hear you. Yeah. Metamorphosis. What do we call it? Metamorphosis. Very good. So we have these super intelligent students out here telling the right answers. The answer is right. Answer is metamorphosis. Third question is, a butterfly's long tongue or hollow feeding tube is called a... Sanvi, you can answer. Sanvi is there. The pier Ma'am, ma piercings. Ma'am, the third one. Yeah, butterfly's long tongue is called... So Ma'am, proboscis. Very good. The answer is proboscis, right? And then we'll move on to the fourth one. How many wings do butterflies have? How many wings? Six. How many wings do butterflies have? Six. Pandeka. You see some hands. I see Divya's hand. Pandeka, you may answer. Okay, Pandeka. Ma'am, two. Are you sure? We'll take some more answers. Pandeka says two. Another answer we'll, uh, we would want to take. Any other student? Sayam Garg. Ma'am, ma'am, butterflies has a four wings. Very good, Sayam. So there is addition to Parnika's answer that there are like two additions. Okay, Parnika said two, Sayam said four. So four is the right answer. We have four wings, two hind wings and two four wings. Right. Uh, then the question is, which part of the body do they use for tasting their food? I have unmuted you. feet. Very good. And that is something which I really find very interesting. That butterflies actually, you know, taste from their feet. The, they have their tasting sensors under their feet. Right. And then we have uh, the last question. Which is... Sorry. How many legs do butterflies have? Just giving you a hint that they are... Under the category of insects. Mom, butterflies have six legs. Very good. So like I told you, they come under the category of insects. Butterflies are insects and all the insects have six legs. So we have got like 99% of the answers that you've given me. The like really nice. These are some interesting facts that we wanted to discuss in the starting. That how much do you know about these beautiful insects, right? So we have all the answers with us. Thank you for the quiz. Yeah. So like Asham sir discussed it with you at the end that what all do you have to do? You want to call it a homework or any sort of fun activity. And like what you can do is like I like, like we showed you the video. I was making videos because I really like clicking pictures or making videos of or all these creepy craw crawlings around my surrounding. One thing, uh, one other thing that I do is Keep a record of it. When we talk about journal, other thing that you can do is make a journal and start, you know, uh, writing down your observations. It can be about birds. It can be about butterflies, any insect, anything that you see in nature can be penned down. I'll show you my journal. Uh, you can see it here. And I'm very fond of birds also. Wherever I go and see different kind of birds, I keep noting down the name or whatever they are doing. It can be their nesting habit. It can be anything. So you can also start doing these interesting things from today itself, like clicking pictures. We love clicking pictures of ourselves. Why not click pictures of nature, right? And then we can start writing our observations. These are the things that you can start doing it from today. Yeah. And imagine if, if all 80 of us do it together as a group and each of you say gets 20 different species, you could have an entire directory of butterflies. You can create an entire encyclopedia of butterflies wow. or of birds within Delhi. And Vivekanand School can become the school that has knowledge about all the butterflies of Delhi or all the birds of Delhi. So it's an interesting activity and it requires no time. All you have to do is, like Prinda said, you just have to click photos and you have to go on Google and try and search for, for the name of that butterfly. 
or you can ask us or you can ask other people who work with nature who could help you and tell you the name of that butterfly and also what plant it sits on so that you have the knowledge of the plant as well as the butterfly yeah. very simple to do won't take much of your time and it's also very 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 important for all of us to start doing this. start documenting start journaling write a diary make a diary and at the same time click some pictures of all these things and start building that rapport and establishing that connect with nature again because it's very very important that we sustain this yeah, yeah. thank you so much all of you i think uh, including yes. those of you who have tuned in on facebook as well i think we couldn't see the comments that were coming in but in case some of you have answered uh, the quiz we'll be happy to go through that afterwards so thank you all very much thank you to the entire team from the school to have got us here to be a part of this uh, webinar and we hope to do many such sessions with students in the coming weeks as well thank you thank you so thank much you. everyone Thank you very much. Both uh, I, on behalf of Vivekanand School, would express a heartfelt vote, vote of thanks to both Mr. Ashim Beris and Ms. Prinda Bajaj for such a valuable contribution to enlighten us on this importance of butterflies in our ecosystem. It was how beautifully you facilitate to us on this importance. Definitely, it's a fruitful webinar for all of us. And I'm very much pleased and humbled and honored to our school management for today's webinar. And must mention a deep sense of appreciation to our team, technical arrangement teams. Last but not the least, I would thank to all of, all of you for your gentle cooperation. And we all are inspired by your votes. Really thankful. Th really thank you to both. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have to do a lot more with this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir.